Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrahi sadri wa yasirli amri wa ahlul uqda min lisani yifqal qawli. So alhamdulillah yesterday we were discussing Surah Yusuf and we mentioned in this surah uh, a number of lessons. One of the great lessons that we learned from this surah is that Yusuf alayhi salam right from the start of the story when he mentions his dream to his father after this he starts to see challenges in his life and we mentioned that this surah was revealed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the year of sorrow when he lost his wife when he lost his uncle and he went he presented Islam to the chiefs of Taif and they rejected him and in this surah right at the start Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَعْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ آلِ يَعْقُوبَ كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا عَلَىٰ أَبْوَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ Before Yusuf a.s. was taken by his brothers and thrown into the well, his father Ya'qub a.s. gave him some advice. And in this advice, his father said to him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose you. He will teach you the interpretation of dreams and he will complete his favor upon you like he did to your forefathers, Ibrahim and Ishaq. And then he taught his son three beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, indeed, you have a Rabb, a Lord who is your nourisher and sustainer to perfection. And he is in the Rabbaka alimun hakim. He is all knowing and he is wise. And subhanAllah, this, these three names, they resonate in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam from start to finish. The general rule is that when you come from a pious and righteous family, this will flow in the generations of the family to come. There are some exceptions, but we see here Yaqub alayhi salam mentioning this to his son. And then we see all of the challenges come one by one. His brothers, when they threw him into the well, they didn't even spare him his shed. They took his shed off. And when he was in the bottom of the well, he, the, it was as if these three names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were resonating with him throughout his whole, whole life. That you have a Rabb and he is your nourisher to perfection. He is al alim he knows you're in the well and he is wise as to why you're in the well. And again, he's being sold on the slave markets. And again, he, this is going through his mind that he has a Rabb who is alim, who is Hakim. And then he's trapped in the house of the, the person who bought him from the market. And his wife is trying to now play games with him and seduce him in a house of shirk and kufr. And again, he then after this, he's thrown into prison, prison. Right at the end of the story, when he meets with his father, and he tells his father that uh, this was the interpretation of my dream, that I saw the, obviously the stars, the sun and the moon bowing down. In those days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had permitted for people to bow down. And uh, the, the family of um, Yusuf alayhi salam had bowed down to him. And he mentions that it was the uh, trick of shaitan to try and sow discord between me and my brothers. And he finishes his sentence by saying, Innahu hakimun, alimun hakim. Again, he's reminding himself and his father throughout the whole story, there's this theme that we have a rub. And sometimes things may not be going our way. We may have difficulties in life. We may have challenges in life. But remember, we have a Lord who knows every single thing about us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the wisdom at the same time. And subhanAllah, we may learn many lessons from this story. Uh, just a few more I'll mention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Yusuf alayhi salam when he reaches the age of maturity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with wisdom and knowledge. And these two, to become a great person, they have to be fine-tuned. They have to go together for you to become a great person. A person can possess knowledge. But true knowledge is that which has wisdom with it. Which has the ability to make sound decisions. To be firm in your thinking and your analyzing of the information at hand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Yusuf alayhi salam was a doer of good. He was a doer of good. And 
when you are a doer of good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with knowledge and wisdom. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for knowledge and wisdom. One final point. When Yusuf alayhi salam was thrown into the prison, we said he was given the ability to interpret dreams. So one of the prisoners told him about the dream. I think both of them had saw dreams and he told them about the interpretation of their dreams. But before he told them the interpretation, he said, I'm going to say a few words before your food comes and then I'm going to tell you the interpretation of your dream before your food comes. He took this opportunity to do that work, to call them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see he knows the food's coming. It's a short period of time, but he used this opportunity to remind them of their creator. There are many lords good, or is one Lord better? And through this, he gave them that word. He called them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this also reminds us about our reality in our life. It's not just a coincidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas, ta'amuruna bil ma'roof wa tunhuna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. That you are the best of nations raised amongst the people. We are the best of nations because we carry a prophetic legacy. And this is the legacy of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Each one of us in this room, in this masjid, we have a responsibility. We are the flag bearers of Islam. And this Islam is not only for me, myself and I. This is a beautiful religion. It's a beautiful faith. We have to share it with our friends, with our family, with humanity at large. If it was just for us, why was the first address in the Quran? Ya ayyuhan nas. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to the whole of mankind? So this is also a reminder that we have an obligation. And this obligation is to discharge this responsibility of da'wah ila Allah. Calling towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and afiyah. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.